Hello, I'm Bob Nudd. I'm here today in Northern Ireland on one of the more famous sections. It's known as Corner Grade. I'm sitting on Peg 27 and this section brings back fond memories for me because it was on here in 1978, that's 14 years ago, that uh, on Peg 30, as a complete novice, I caught 166 pounds, nine and a half ounces of fish. I was using a 14 foot glass pole sitting on a wicker basket and uh, I happened to win the match. In those days, uh, people like Kevin Ashurst and Ian Heaps, they were my heroes. They didn't even know me. I just started fishing. So for me, it, it was brilliant to, to come here as a complete amateur and, and win a competition. And that's really what set me on the road to match fishing and pole fishing as well because I realised how efficient a pole can be. Even in the hands, really then as an amateur with a lot of fish, you can do some damage. So once you really get to know it as a professional, it can be good, it can be a very efficient tool. So really from then on, and that was, as I say, that was 14 years ago, that really is what spurred me on to, to match fishing and, and, and then luckily getting picked for England which got me into Italy and to learn all the Italian techniques of pole fishing, into France for the French techniques, and I decided to specialise in it. So, for me, really, that was the start of it. Here, on corner grade, uh, was, was really the beginning of, of my match fishing career. And, and if you think back, it, it's only 14 years, it's, it's a very short career, but um, it's been fairly successful. Now today we've been catching some fish here already. I've, I've already caught 20, 30, 40 pound of bream and uh, I'm going to show you how to catch some more. All right, let's get back out there for another one. One important thing to remember when you're shipping out a pole is to, to get the float and the bait to lay in the line that the river's flowing. As you go out, if you just lift up with your left hand, I'll just try and do it slowly and point the rod downstream, so you lay the bait in a line. It doesn't want to go out in a tangled heap. Lay it in line with the way that the water's flowing. And when you're feeding, now you've got to feed and hold the pole. So what you do is you push the pole between your legs and you can hold it. You can rest your arm on your knee and look, I can hold a 12 meter pole with one finger there. Look, just one finger to hold it, to support it. This leaves the right hand free to feed. That's most important, so you back, you can hold it with one hand, you can even strike with that hand if you need to, and throw the ball of ground bait behind the float, it's about a metre behind it, a nice ball of cloud, and then bring the pole back in the position that you're actually going to fish with it. That's holding it in the right hand, running your arm along the pole, and then just supporting with your left hand, ready to do the strike, because that's, that, that's the hand that does the actual striking. Just support it, keep the float steady as you're running downstream. And when it's really windy, it makes it more difficult, but uh, just try and keep the float as still as possible. That length of line I've got between the float and the tip helps. I've got a reasonable amount of line. If necessary, I can bury it under the water slightly. Just ease the float down, waiting for the bite. And the fish are well down the peg, they're still well down the peg, which means they're still very wary. It's a good job we're using this small hook. I think if I had something like a 14 or a, or a 12 on, we probably wouldn't be getting any bites at all. Got to fool these fish into taking. Here we go. Down the peg, just waiting for the bite. It's fairly warm now, it's midday, the sun's up, it's fabulous weather for Ireland. I just had a little bite then, an indication of a fish. I thought it was on because the float lifted. Just run it down again. I say the sun's at its highest now, it's, it's really warm, and it's a wonder the fish are feeding at all. But they are. Now, technology has gone so far, if, if I can think back to sort of eight, ten years ago, the hooks we used then, the points were forever going on them or they were straightening. But nowadays, 
with uh, the new technology from Japan in hooks, the actual very, very high carbon content hooks. They're brilliant. You can fish with the same hook for a match. Well, I've even got one that I've fished with for four matches back in England, a bread punch hook. I've kept it on the same rig, the same hook, and I can remember fishing four matches with it. So that's how good hooks are nowadays. I wouldn't recommend that to everybody, but uh, they're a va vast improvement on what they were before. You know, the float's just going and there's one on, right down the bottom of the peg. They're even falling back down further now. Another good bream on. Look at the elastic, just doing the work. It's easy fishing. It's easy fishing, it's no problem. Feed the pole back, just put it back, feed it back in your hands, ready for your unshipping point. Always watch for your unshipping point. Always be aware of your, where you're going to unship at. Get this front end of the pole out of the way. Wind's blowing, but it's hard. And quickly bring it to the top. This fish is fighting well. But once again, no problem because of the elastic. Just all the pressure on the right hand. And back we go. It looks like a nice hybrid, just over a pound. It's unusual to catch hybrids on the bottom. I caught that one on the bottom down with peg, but I'd be thinking that this sort of fish would normally be right at the front of your peg. They're normally really greedy and they're up in the water, but look at that beautiful fish, just over a pound, really hard fighting fish. Once again, perfectly hooked in the lip. So you even see the maggots in there now. Look at that, a beautiful fish. You wouldn't expect me to be using ground bait like this in Ireland. It's a surface mix. Just take a look at this. See how it's floating on the top? It's the last thing you'd be expecting to use here. See how the casters are dropping away from it. Now the reason I'm using this is because in fact the river here today is very sluggish and slow moving. It's about 10 foot deep and the fish are hard to find, although I'm catching plenty of fish, you still need to draw them into your peg and keep drawing them in all day long. I'm doing this by using this light surface cloud with a few casters in it, just a mix, a nice blend of ground bait to draw fish in. Casters actually pull the fish in and keep them feeding and the surface cloud draws fish into your peg as it runs down with the flow, as the cloud runs with the flow. Now the mix I'm using is 50% lake, which is a continental ground bait and 50% breadcrumb. This gives a nice, although it's lake and this is a river, it's very slow moving, almost like a lake. So it gives a nice surface mix. If you need a heavier mix, then you can use a river mix with less brown crumb and, and more white if the river's flowing. So you have to vary it depending on where you're fishing. And in this, as you can see, it's, it's, a, it's a lightweight mix. It's a fairly dry mix. I've run it through a riddle so that as soon as you throw it out, you, it just about holds in your hand. As soon as you throw it out, it hits the surface, breaks up immediately. Bream and skimmers and hybrids are a very finicky fish. They don't always like heavy balls of ground bait on their heads. So nice surface, nice lightweight mix keeps them feeding, keeps them going all day long. And this, this is what's going to happen today, and this is why I'm catching. I'm running the float down through this actual cloud mix, and it's very important. Feeding with pole fishing is very, very important. Important that you get it in the right position as you're running your float down, and important that the fish actually keep feeding and they're confident in the actual flow. So there you are, ground baiting. Without it, we wouldn't catch anywhere near as many fish. Catching fish like this reminds me of world championships and, and what a pleasure it was to be there when every cast in the float was going under. And a similar sort of thing here today except then I was catching on the drop. Catching a little bit quicker as well because they were smaller fish. But same sort of thing and uh, thinking about it and, and thinking back to then and the year before I realise just how lucky I am to be able to do this as an actual job, to be able to go fishing 
as part of a job because I get so much pleasure from it, so much pleasure from actually catching, catching fish. It's, it's so important. And each time working out something different, each time learning, even the amount of pole fishing I do and, and fishing, say, three, four, five days a week, I still feel that every time I go out, I learn something. I think perhaps once you stop learning, then that's the end. You, 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 if you think you know it all, then that's the end of your fishing. All the time you've got to be trying to improve your techniques and work out exactly what the fish are doing. What, what exactly are they doing under the water? How are they reacting to your feed? Do you need to pick fish off from the edge of the shoal? Are you disturbing them by going through the middle? And all things like this that you need to work out. And, and the fact of drawing fish all the time, drawing fish into your peg. So every time that float's going down, I'm just thinking to myself, where are the fish, what are they doing? Why haven't I got a bite quick enough? But today is just a pleasure day. It's just a, just a pleasure to be catching fish. Not so important, the amount of fish. There's a bite again, and it's on. Every time, it's so, so perfectly controlled. The strike and everything. A pole really is just a part of you. As long as you get to learn to use it, you make no mistakes, no tangles, no muck-ups. And in it comes. Oh, look at this. It's a beautiful big roach. There, yeah, lovely fish. Beautiful roach. Probably almost a pound, I should think. Right. Now we've got this one in. Let's have a look. Just unhook it, and then we'll have a look at the end tackle that I'm using today. A beautiful roach. There, gorgeous fish. Over a pound. Right, let's have a look at the rig I'm using today. It's not really a typical Irish rig, but uh, I found this year that the fish are a little bit more cautious, a little bit more shy than normal. So we've had to fish much smaller tackle, lighter lines. So starting off with the bottom, I've only got an 18 hook, which is unusual, but I'm still quite confident in catching a 100 pound of fish with this hook. It's an 18 hook and I'm, gonna, I'm using two maggots on the hook. Moving up from there, about 10 inches up, I've got two small shots around about number 10s. And then another 12 inches above that, three more shot, two number 10s and a tiny shot, which I, I just used to balance up the float to get the antenna shotted right down. And further up, about a third of the depth, I've got a tungsten Olivet. And there's a piece of sleeving running through the middle of the Olivet, and then it's plugged with a nylon bristle. This enables it to, be, to not move on its own, but to be moved as long as you pull it. If you're catching a lot of fish and that's too loose, then you'll see the Olivet will slide up and down. Plugged tightly, it can move freely without damaging the line. The line is 012 diameter, which is just over two pound. Now the swim is around about 10 foot deep. I've got a two gram float, with a carbon stem. It's hand painted on the bristle. I always do this for more visibility, much more color. What I do is, is paint it white, paint the bristle actually base white, then use a fluorescent red, and then varnish over the top. This is the best color for all sorts of lights, for dark light, light light. You can see it in a mixture of lights. Moving even further up to the end, I'm used, because I'm using an 18 hook, I've also used an elastic. If you use a, a stiffish flick tip with an 18 hook, you pull out of these fish, these bream every time. So I've got a number eight elastic through three sections, which give me a lot, a lot of play. I can catch small fish without bumping them and, and also hook bream and control them fairly well. Just a ston flow, but that's through three sections, that elastic, and gives you lots of play for the fish. That's our Irish rig for today. Also, 
I've got an English rig that I use. Not use here, but I'll, we'll run through it. This is a typical little English rig. And on this, I've got space shots. Starting with a hook. Tiny hook compared to uh, Irish fishing. There's a number 24. And then equally spaced up the line, I've got number 11 shots. Eight number 11 shots. I prefer these to styles. When, um, when, when styles first come out, I was, I was dead keen on using them, but now I've gone against them. I find shots are better, they don't tangle as much. They drop through the water smoothly. And as long as you get perfectly round, a pure shot, then uh, it's okay. Moving up to the float, just a very, very slim float. Once again, this is for fishing on the drop. This is a, a, a Descay float. It's wire all the way through, wire tip. Once again, I've painted the antenna there for, for, for good visibility, because it's very, very slim. But you can see any bites on the drop, and, and all sorts of floats of fishing on the drop. You want a very, very slim, thin float. It's much easier. And moving up to the top of the pole, it's always important to have balanced tackle. So when you're using very, very fine hooks, fine line, then you want fine elastic. And I've got through here, I've got a, a number three elastic, very fine, through two sections. But once again, it's silk smooth so that you don't bump fish. Very, very important to have balanced equipment. And on the end there, I've got a unique way of fixing this elastic because on light elastic, you don't really want a heavy ston flow. So what I've done, I've got a small piece of silicon, which is on the elastic and not on the end of the elastic. And you can fix the line on the knot. Fix the line over the end of the knot, pull the sleeving back over, through it, and there it's completely clean, very light. If you have a heavy ston flow flicking backwards and forwards, it tends to catch around the top of the pole. But this is so light, it just never ever catches up, and it just makes for much more efficient pole fishing, far, far better. Right, now I've shown you that, let's get back on that other rig and catch some more fish. The fishing's really good now, there's plenty of fish there. They seem to be at the bottom of the swim, which, which means really there's not an awful lot there, but uh, there's enough to catch, there's enough to catch a hundred pound. They're just a wee bit wary, because it's so, the flow is so slow, and it's fairly clear the water. I'm just putting a little bit of cloud in there, trying to interest the fish, trying to entice them into that cloud, overcome their fear. Because naturally, fish are shy. They are naturally aware of baits and hook baits, even here. Although the fish look in perfect condition, probably sometime during the live, some of them have been caught. So you've got to keep feeding, Keep attracting more fish into your peg. You want them competing for food. The more the fish compete, then the easier it is to catch them. You can imagine if they're all fighting over, over just a little bit of feed that's going down, a few casters, if, if, they're, if they're fighting over that bait, then the chances are they'll take your hook bait. Because it, it just looked a little bit more unnatural, even to them, they know. They know that uh, it's not quite exactly the same as completely loose offerings. I'm having to run right down the peg now at times to get a bite. The bream are hanging right down there. Oh, that was a bite that I missed. One good thing about this long pole short line, if you miss a bite, you can go straight back in, you're ready. You're right over the top of the float, ready to strike. You can strike as hard as you want because the elastic is there to cushion everything. In fact, you do have to strike quite hard because you have to account for the elastic taking up. 
So to make sure you set the, the hook home, you have to strike fairly hard. Running right down the peg now. I've got about four foot of line between my pole tip and the actual pole float, just so I can get down my peg and keep the float fairly stable, running it in a dead line. Particularly in wind, windy conditions, it can blow the pole around, so you have to try and keep it as still as you can. Just got the tip under the water a little bit now. Just waiting for that bite. No bite, bite develops, you can start back up your swim again. Lay the line out straight and run down your peg, but feed again. That's the important thing, to keep feeding this cloud every cast. Keep the fish coming into it. It's always important with feeding is to keep it consistent. So the fish get used to the rate at which either maggots are flowing or falling through the water if you're loose feeding. Or with this cloud, they're getting used to regular intervals of feed going through. So it becomes normal for them. I'm fishing with two maggots just, just about, just touching bottom. So it might be a roach, this one. No, I think it's a bream. The problem is, if, you, if, you, if you've got too many bream in your swim, the problem is the roach won't come in. You know, if you're fishing and catching a lot of roach at times, then suddenly it goes dead, suddenly there's nothing there, the chances are it's because a shoal of bream have come into your peg. They've moved in and, it, and they shift everything else out. Roach don't really want to mix. They keep out of the way. And this is another small bream. Fabulous fishing, though. It's virtually a fish every cast now. And even on this light tackle, I'm using 18 hook, sort of a pound and a half bottom. I could still feel confident in catching 40 pound of fish in five hours. These are lovely, lovely sized match fish. Just over a pound, beautiful condition. Skimmers we call these, they're not quite bream, but they're, well, probably a pound and a quarter, that one. Beautiful fish, just hooked in the side. There, lovely fish. They're beautiful. So the fishing is good. This is Northern Ireland, and this is exactly what Northern Ireland's like. I mean, even this stage that I'm sitting on, it's been here about, probably been here 16 years, but it's still solid stand. This is, this is what the tourist board here have done, the tourist board, Northern Irish Tourist Board, and for Manor District Council. They've put a lot of effort in because they know it's important for anglers to come here, for anglers to come and fish and enjoy themselves, bring their wives and families and just see what the fishing's like. And without a doubt, the fishing in Northern Ireland, particularly this area here and Port of Down, is, for me, it's the best fishing in the whole of Europe. I travel France, Italy, Belgium, everywhere, but nowhere, nowhere is, is there this sort of fishing, these stamp of fish. You can quite often catch 40, 50, 60 pounds of roach and bream, and it, it's just fabulous fishing. And the people are, are, are the same as well. They're fabulous. They, they welcome you with open arms, look after you. It's necessary. They need us over here, and, and they, they like to think we're enjoying ourselves, and I always do. This is, for me, it's an annual pilgrimage here every year for, for about a month, while there's no fishing in England, to come here and catch these fish in these numbers. It's just lovely. I mean, I enjoy catching fish. I don't have to. I don't have to match fish. I just get so much pleasure from catching fish and seeing how fish feed, how they work, what they're doing, and, and try and work out all different ways of catching them, to catch them, and to get them feeding better than I've done before. And that, that's what I did in the World Championships this year. It was all part of it. It's all part of overcoming the fear of the fish, presenting the bait presenting the float, and then when you're getting the bite, hooking the fish. Now when fishing with, with long pole and short line, the length of line is important, but it varies depending on where you're fishing. If you're fishing in a, in a fast flowing river, then you need 
more line between your float and your pole tip. The reason for this is the river's flowing and, and, and you'll need to get further down your peg to actually catch the fish, no matter where you're feeding, you need to get further down your peg. I did this in Yugoslavia two years ago when I won the uh, World Championships. I was fishing with a, with a line of about sort of three to four metres long, even though it was classified as short line fishing. I had a fair length of line. So if you're fishing a still water, you may only need two or three foot. It, it varies depending on where you are. Today we've got about four foot of line. It's not flying that hard, but I still want to get down the end of the peg because the fish are there. There's another one on now. This is fabulous fishing. See the elastic doing the work? Just leave the elastic to do the work. The fish can't break you, just feed back. Beautiful. Every time a winner. Every time you go out. You've still got a fish for them though. They're not jumping on the hook. You still have to work your float down your peg, right down to the end of your peg. And then the elastic's doing all the work now. Just lean back on it. Just lean back on it. Here it comes. Now yeah, that's exactly the same size as the one I just had. It's about a pound and a quarter. Beautiful match fish. Beautiful fish. I'm here today on the broad meadow section of the urn in Enniskillen, County Fermanagh. And this is a section where in 1977, Ian Heaps set the world record with 166 pounds, 11 and a half ounces of roach, which in those days was a massive weight of fish. The interesting thing about it was, he caught them with a five meter glass fibre pole with the same length of line. Now this is called fishing to hand or, or fishing with same length of line. This is the technique I want to demonstrate today. But since then technology has moved on and we're now fishing with poles up to 11 metres, carbon poles, and we can use this same technique but we can get a much greater distance. The fish now are a lot shyer than they were in those days. You'd never catch them here now at five or six metres, no chance. So we've got to fish 10, 11 metres. And this is what I want to demonstrate today, just to go through this technique. As it happens today, we're very fortunate to have the wind on our backs, um, which uh, makes it easy for casting out. Not so good when you're coming back in with a small fish. As long as I'm bringing back a pound roach every time, it's okay, it will come to hand. But um, Anyway, let's just demonstrate this technique. Let's see, I've already been fishing for about an hour, so, and I've already caught some fish, so here goes, let's see if we can catch some more. Another fish on, oh, we're in again. Another bream, seems to be a lot of bream here today. Oh look, a beautiful fish. Probably about two pound. Look how easy this, this pole controls them. They can't go anywhere, it's a method, it's a bagging up method. Nice heavy flick tip, fish straight in. And this is the most difficult part of fishing hand is when you've got to net a fish because you have to keep your pole down low. I'm lucky here that I've got the wall and I can drop my pole down into the water. Other times you might have to unship this first section here to land a fish, particularly if you're catching all bream. There's another lovely bream, straight in, nicely lip hooked, beautiful conditioned fish. 
As I said, this is a bagging up method when you're looking to catch 100 pound plus of fish. When um, we use this method in England, but not, not for catching 100 pound, you can use, there's two venues that I use it a lot. One is a place called the River Wensum in Norwich. And there you're catching roach, small roach, and, and quite often you need 20, 25 pound of these small roach, but you need to catch them quickly. And you're fishing off a high wall, uh, the Wensum runs through the actual city of Norwich, and, and you're sitting on a high wall, so it's very easy to fish to hand, and you're fishing into fairly deep water, and you need to fish quickly. And uh, this, is, this is a very, very good method for fishing there. There's not many places in England, I, I should say, where you can fish it, but that's one of them. And there you can catch, as I said, 20, 25 pound of roach, fishing to hand. But you have to refine everything down because you're only catching two ounce roach. There's no problem to swing to hand. Put another ball of ground bait in. Mustn't forget the ground bait. And um, you can use a much softer action pole and a much softer flick tip because there I have to use size 20 hooks. I can't use size 14. So therefore you need a much softer pole and a finer tip, otherwise you tear out of the fish. There's another venue as well, it's called um, Ten Mile Bank, which is where the Great Ooze comes out at Denver Sluice, just above there. And that's a, a deep venue, sort of something like 20, 25 foot. And again, you're fishing for small roach, well roach up to half a pound, but there's a big quantity of them. Anywhere where you're getting lots of bites very quickly, and presentation isn't that important. So when you're looking for speed fishing, you're not worried about presentation, then you can use this method of fishing. Another one on, this is good fishing, is known as the, now this, this time I'll be able to swing this one to hand. It's not a big fish. To perch. So this, I'll just show you this technique. When the fish is coming to hand, this technique of unhooking. As the fish comes in, catch it. Now you've got your pole up in the air. Swing your, your arm and hold, hold the pole with your forearm. So it leaves your right hand free to unhook the fish. So in fact, you're not really holding the pole, you're just supporting it there. It leaves your right hand free to unhook, or I'm just going to use my discorder on this one, to unhook. And then you're then ready, your arm's there, flick up, ready to cast out again, all the time looking for speed and efficiency. Um, behind us here we've got the Lakeland Forum, which is really the centrepiece of Fermanagh. And there you've got all the facilities, swimming pools, gymnasium. This is where the draw takes place for the big uh, P&O Classic. And all of these things... Let's throw another ball out, mustn't forget that. All of these things are provided really by the, the local Fermanagh District Council. They're all part of the facilities that you can enjoy here. The actual county itself has got so much water, you've got here we're fishing the River Urn, you've got an upper lock, a lower lock, plus loads of different lakes and rivers and plenty of places to fish, plenty of places to catch fish. This is just one of many along here today, there, virtually every peg is taken, it's such a prolific stretch of water, every peg's taken, plenty of people fishing. We're in again, another fish on. Oh, we've caught a roach, yeah. This is another one. We'll just show you the technique of swinging the hand again. Straight in with these fish. An eight ounce roach, straight into hand. Beautiful conditioned fish. Watch, make sure you know how to unhook it. Arm round the pole, leaves your hand free for the fish to go into the net. I mentioned briefly earlier the, the technique of casting, but let, let me show it to you in more detail, because it's so important. What you've got to do is use your box as a fulcrum point. Rest your pole on your box. That takes most of the weight. And then 
right or left handed, I could do it both, but right hand, watch the length of your line, it needs to be something like two foot from the bottom of the pole to your hook length. If this is too long, it makes it difficult to cast and also difficult when you're swinging the fish in. Holding the pole with your right hand, bait in the left, and then when you go out, it's sort of a, as you go out, you swing up, you pull up with the right hand and you still the weight of the pole is on your box. So as you come up, you swing, using the pole, flick it, give it a slight flick, and it shoots out. It's perhaps a little bit difficult when you first start, but after a few goes, a few trials, you get used to it. Now this method of, of long pole, long line fishing, is really, it's developed for, it's not for presentation. It's, it's for immediate bites. You're looking as soon as the float goes out for it to go under because you've got a long length of line from your float to your tip. And it's difficult to control it sometimes, particularly in windy conditions. Windy conditions when there's no flow, it's always difficult to control it. So you need to be looking for fast bites what it can do for you, of course, is, is give you the edge on distance because I'm now fishing something like, just missed a bite there, 11 metre pole with, it, with sort of 10 metres of line. The swim's about three metres deep, so it, so it means it's something like 16 or 17 metres that we're fishing out. So it, it does give you an extra length that you couldn't obtain with a long pole, just long pole and short line. You can see it's a fair throw for the, for the ground bait. And let's have a look. It's, as I say, it's a technique where you're looking for bites very, very quickly. It's good. This method really was developed uh, in the early days, as I said, with Ian Heaps catching that, that massive weight of roach. Since then, we went to the ban, um, and, and there in the early 80s, it was fabulous roach fishing. Even then, we were only fishing six, seven, eight metres, and we've gone on. The fish have got more wary since then. There's not as many of them, and we've had to go out further. We fish further to catch them. You can't catch them on, on the short range that you used to be able to, but the technique is still the same, and it's it's still easy to catch a hundred pound of fish. It's no problem to catch a hundred pound of fish as long as they're feeding. Make sure you keep putting soft balls of ground bait in. You can move the float, you can lift it, pull it, do things with it, but it's not quite the same control that you get if you are using a long pole. You've got to pull it in, lift it, move the bait, Try and entice the fish to feed. Today we're looking to catch a mixture of bream and roach. In fact, this, this end of Broadmeadow, which is the high numbers, this is, this is peg 24, 25 and 26. They're, they're recognised bream pegs. This is what we're looking for today. I'm trying to entice the bream in close, get them in within in pole range so I can catch them quickly. And with a sprinkling of roach in with them. Just missed another bite then. So there's, there's a few fish here. I can see the float is bobbling up and down. With bream, sometimes they bang against the Olivet and you can see the float lift up and drop down. Almost as if you're getting line bites on tip fishing. The same thing happens with pole fishing. The actual peg is about nine, ten foot deep but virtually no flow on it whatsoever today. The, the river itself, sometimes it will run hard, uh, other times it will be very steady, and today the, there's no flow at all. It just depends what's happening in the lock gates down below. Keep moving the bait, try and entice the fish to feed. Can you see how I'm holding the pole? I've still got the pole between my legs, but then resting my arms on my knees, and there's absolutely no weight taken there at all. Just holding, I can hold it in one hand, I can strike with left while I'm throwing in the feed. I can hold the pole with my left hand, throw the feed in with my right, and I can even strike with left hand. Strike with the left, 
or strike with the right. Just rest them on your knees. Use your knees as your main support. And you'll find that you can sit, fish all day, all fish on, Keep feeding the cloud, working your float all the time. If I get a fish on the drop now, it'll probably be a roach or a hybrid, and the fish on the bottom will be bream. The tackle I'm using today is um, a five gram float on here. It's well balanced, but positive. The float is very light, so it's following the olivet. As I cast out, the float is following the Olivet. And that's important with all to hand fishing. Keep the float, make sure it's a, a cane stem or a carbon stem float. Keep it as light as possible. Looks like another bite there now. I missed it. Flick the float straight back out. You don't need to come all the way in. If you miss a bite, if you strike and miss a bite, you can actually stop midway through the strike and just flick the float back saves you coming all the way in and picking up and casting out again. You may come in a metre or so, but it doesn't hurt because the fish are fluctuating, they're backwards and forwards. Float just dip then. Well, I'm in again. A strange fish, oh, it's a tiny perch, I think. Yeah, a little tiny perch. Now this, this is the sort of fish that you can lift in with this pole, about a two or three ounce. That's no problem. But look at that. How did that get to find the feed when there's all those big bream out there? Something we haven't really spoken about is, is the actual ground baiting, in, initial ground baiting, how, how I actually start off or approach a match. It, it depends really, there's, there's so many different types of ground bait now. I think English anglers have never been very good at, at the continental style mixes. So what we do, what we tend to do, we buy continental ground bait. We import it from abroad. The French and the Belgians are very good at it. I happen to like Van der Nijn ground bait as a continental mix. It, um, it, it does a lot more than just normal brown crumb. It's a far heavier mix. You can pack a lot of feed into it. You can do all sorts of different things with it. But what, um, how I would initially start a competition, depending on, say if we were fishing with bloodworm, you need an initial bombardment of feed, a continental style bombardment of feed. You need something like perhaps 10 or 12 balls of ground bait in your swim, in a world championship match. So what I would do is, um, you feed initially with the ground bait, that's continental style with bloodworm. If you, if you take this sort of situation, it's, we're looking at a few bream, you don't want to scare the fish off, then I go for a much lighter texture ground bait, 
I'd probably put three or four softballs in to start with and then just keep adding a softball every cast. It's just, depending on what swim you're fishing, you have to vary the weight of your ground bait, vary the style of feeding, what feed you're actually putting in it, whether it will be bloodworm and joker, or whether it be casters, what you're fishing for. It's just a variation. But it's since, I think since we have started to use continental ground baits, our fishing has improved. Because there's no doubt about it, the continental anglers, the French, Belgians, Dutch, they do have a lot of knowledge on what actually goes in ground baits and what it needs to excite fish to feed. It's just something that English anglers have never had. We've always used brown crumb, or we used to use brown crumb, and that was it. If we needed to make it stiffer, we'd put a bit of white bread with it, and that would be it finished. But now we've advanced, we're using continental ground baits. These seem, definitely seem to have fish attractors in it, and they hold fish in your peg for a lot longer. You could do a lot more with them. You can make them softer, you can make them harder. Oh, another fish on. wonder what this is. Looks like my swim's been invaded by perch at the moment. Another little tiny perch. So going back onto ground baits, I, th I think with continental style of ground baits, the most important thing in the ingredients is the way that they stimulate fish, the way that they work under the water. They actually break up quickly. They don't just lie on the bottom in a lump. See, white crumb and brown crumb, it doesn't do very much. You throw it in the water and it just stays there. Perhaps it will break up slowly. Continental ground baits are very, very active. It's a little tiny boat going by with its motor on full revs. Continental ground baits are very, very active. When they're on the bottom, they're always working. There's always ingredients in there that are stimulating the fish into feeding. And you can see it's working successfully today. Another big fish now, breeding this time. Can you see the action in that pole? Look at it. But it's killing the fish, very light pole, but it's great fun on this beautiful bream. Look at it coming in, look how fast I can get it in. Pole's bent double, but look at it, skimming across the water. This is exciting fishing. The bream there, probably pound and a half, two pound, under control so easily. Safely in the net. Yeah, another lovely fish. Very strong fish, but the, co the pole copes with them. No problem at all. And this is fairly light line on here. It's only two pound line, but because of the flex in the pole, it eases everything out. It smooths everything out. Only a tiny hook as well, look. Number, number 16 hook there, tiny hook. But I could pull that bream straight in because of the, the, the actual pole is so soft, it's action. Oh, we're in again. Fabulous fishing. Another big bream. Oh, this is, this is probably one of the biggest of the day, this one. Beautiful golden fish. Two hands now just to control it. This is a slightly bigger fish. But get it up to the top, look, that's important. Get it up to the top, get his head just out of the water. And then a nice smooth pull in, ready for the net. That's a tiny hook in that fish and it's over two pound. Look at the color of it, it's beautiful. Beautiful golden, goldeny bronze. Lovely fish. We're lucky today that we've got the wind behind us, but sometimes you get a situation where you've got the wind blowing into you. 
and it's not then it's not so easy to cast exactly how I've shown you. Well, like, you can do it, but you have to perhaps use a heavier float. There's another technique which is an overhead cast. But you've got to be careful with it and you've got to make sure that the pole you're using, because when you're overhead casting it puts a tremendous strain on the pole, you've got to make sure the pole you're using can actually cope with that situation. Because you swing out with your tackle and you hold the pole different, then you hold it in two hands, you swing out, you come back with your tackle and then cast overhead. Everything goes out in a dead straight line you force forward with this right hand, pushing it over. Everything goes in a dead straight line. It just takes, it takes longer to do, but you, sometimes it's necessary. If you're trying to cast a very light float out against the wind, it's impossible to do that underarm cast, and then you need this overhead flick. But you need a very, very flexible pole to do this action, because as you come back and whip forward, it, it's a tremendous strain on the pole. Everything goes in a dead straight line. It's perfectly acceptable to do it. I think it just sometimes tends to be a little bit slower than that underarm flick. So where possible, try and get away with the underarm flick. If you've got to use a light flow, you've got strong wind against you, then you may have to use the overhead cast. But don't come back to me if you break your pole. Make sure that uh, the pole can stand it first. It's another big fish. In fact, this feels a, a really good fish. It just goes to show you what this, this tackle can do. But what, you, what you've got to remember when you're on long pole, long line, is the conditions. Sometimes the conditions are such that you can't fish this method. It may be too windy, there may not be enough flow, it's a lovely big bream, this one. Beautiful fish. So, conditions will dictate exactly whether you can use this method or not. But it, but it is a brilliant method. A brilliant method for catching a lot of fish. Remember to keep the tackle balanced. If you're using a small float, you've got to use lighter line. Bigger float, you can use heavier line and crunch the fish more. That's a lovely bream. Something like three pound. And look how easy it was handled much easier than on a feeder or on elastic. Lovely big bream, about three pound, but straight in. That's what happens when you're on an efficient method. But as I say, you can't use it everywhere. Some days it's good, some days you can't even use it. Right, we'll go out again and this will definitely be our last fish of the day, I think. Wind's still blowing hard, but um, it's assisting us. It's definitely assisting us. And lo as long as you're coming back in with two and three pound bream every time, it doesn't matter. It comes in easy. It certainly goes out easy with this. Just a flick, and it's out dead straight. Well, it's been a brilliant day's fishing. It, it, there's so many fish here now. Once again, it, it, it's accurate feeding, keeping on fishing, keep feeding accurately. We've had a, a brilliant day's fishing. I've really enjoyed it. In fact, I don't want to go home. The only thing is it looks like it might be raining soon. The wind's getting up. And, uh, well, I've been in Ireland for six weeks now, so I suppose I'd better go back and do something. There's another one again. This is definitely the last fish of the day. Or would you believe it's a perch? Mind you, it's usually a sign that fishing is coming to an end when you catch one of these. A little tiny perch, about four ounces. That's definitely it. Let's have a look and see what we've caught.
Well, that's the end of my holiday, but I'll certainly be back to Enniskillen. <laughs>